Loyalty. Loyalty, 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 loyalty. Love that word. That word loyalty is not spoken a lot um, in the Bible, in the word, like, you know, where you'll find like a whole bunch in um, the Bible in reference to loyalty, but not the word, the word loyalty has been created over time. When I researched it, it, it refers to like loyalty came from like a Greek word talking about like legal, what is right and, um, in reference to that. But we know that loyalty is so much greater because it's not a legal requirement now. <laughs> it's, you know, indeed, good morning. It is Sunday at sunrise. Thank you so much for sharing yet again your Sunday morning with me. I hear the birds. You know, we're, we're Sunday at sunrise and we keep our 7 a.m. And we get a chance to kind of see as time changes, you know, that uh, as time changes. But God doesn't change. God doesn't change. So we're going to eventually... We're going to get some extra time, right? Because I think it's fall forward, spring back. We made it. We lived through the spring back <laughs> in March. We're going to fall forward. You're going to get some extra time. and But our body adjusts. Our body adjusts. But what are the things in society that we find ourselves adjusting to you know, that, that we don't need to, that aren't necessarily good for us? You know, and, um, and, and today I wanted to just um, think about, talk about, discuss. I'm going to open up the microphones in a few. Um, but I wanted us to make sure that we um, think about loyalty and um, how far it goes back. Uh, someone posted on our um the Afroeconomics with J.B. Bryan, the social media page, and um, one of the social media pages, and when I was um, talking about this um, topic for today, and he said, you know, I'm always loyal, but it just doesn't seem to work out for me. And I replied to him that stay that way. You will win. You will win. And I truly believe that. You know, even um, as we see in the word um, in Matthew chapter 26, where it talks about where Judas, you know, committed that huge betrayal of Jesus by, you know, kissing Jesus to point out who, who Jesus was, you know, that, and, um, but Jesus knew that loyalty would be a challenge for his disciples. And he knew, you know, that it would be someone close to him that would betray him. And then, but um, what happened was, and, and there's a lot of theological debate about this, you know, that why did um, Judas, you know, accept the 30 pieces of silver? They, you know, Judas, Judas asked them, said, what will you pay for me to do this? You want, you want me to point out, you know, Jesus, then who, what, you know, what's in it for me? And they gave him 30 pieces of silver. You know, and how many times do we find, you know, people who have been blessed to be in a position of influence say, what's in it for me? And then settle settle for the 30 pieces of silver. And I wanted to really research like, you know, with 30 pieces of silver at that time, because it was a lot different, you know, was that something that like totally could change his lifestyle? Like Judas was like, I got it made now, you know? So, so I wanted to see if I could find some research. And I found that 30 pieces of silver it said was about five weeks of money in that time. 
so that um, if they based it on the Roman denarius and that they adjusted it and, um, you know, there's a lot of information on there out there, out there about it. So it was about $600 in that time that would have lasted him about five weeks of pay. If we adjust it forward, um, it would be about, um, to the average person working, about $4,000. So it's not like that he sold out Jesus and um, that it was really life-changing amount of money. So after he realized what he did, uh, no, and, and it's also in Matthew, it's Matthew 27, verse 1 through 10. It said that Judas, after learning that Jesus was going to be crucified, Judas attempted to return the money that he had been paid for the betrayal. No, you know, and they were like, no, nah, we're good now. We got him. It's our own. Judas was so upset about it that he took his own life. He took his own life. He was so upset about it. That's how important loyalty is. That's how important it is. And, you know, I wonder if people really meditate on that because you know how they, um, you know, um, this, we have this saying now that says everybody has a price. Um, everybody, you know, um, you know, that like, do, do we all really have a price where you would really sell out where you would really, um, you know, sell out God, like give up on God, give up on your faith, um, sell out your faith, you know, that we really need to think about that. Or, or, or are you even living in a situation where um, you have that challenge right now where you've done that and you're going, you're trying to figure out how do I recover from this? Like Judas was. And in that attempt to do that, like that you could be slowly killing yourself over time because of making a life commitment to something that is not empowering, making a life commitment to something that's not of God, making a life commitment to a lifestyle of that's not of God. So those, you know, that is really um, what loyalty is all about. Like our relationship with God changes how we approach everything. In Proverbs chapter three, verses one through three, it says, my child, never forget the things that I've taught you. Store my commandments in your heart. If you do this, you will live many years and your life will be satisfying. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck <laughs> as a reminder. Write them deep in your heart. How hard is that? You know, last week I went through a very disappointing situation with a family member. And she hurt my heart so bad that I would lost sight, lost sight of kindness. You know, that's what I feel that we really need to just stay as close in the word as we can, because constantly, the more we develop our relationship with God, Gloria, the hardest, harder it's going to be, Selena, the more they're going to go after us, <laughs> Cynthia, right? That, you know, you know, Maria, it's, you know, hard when you start putting yourself out there as a loyal, committed person to God, to follow his commandments, then people will gather money, gather effort <laughs> to put those 30 coins together to find a Judas that will come after you and make you lose, only temporarily, make you lose your godly mind godly mind you know and it, but it made me 
think about how important it was because I felt that she had attacked my testimony. I felt that she had attacked what all that God had done for me, you know, and, and, and amen, back at you, amen. The, I felt that I, you know, that she wasn't respecting all that God had done for me. But I had to realize that everybody does not celebrate your testimony. And they're not going to see, see the wrong in the world has to use those that are close to you, Miss Perry, or it's not going to be effective in pulling you away from God said, keep loyalty and kindness hung around our heart. <laughs> I'm hung around our neck. Look, and close to our heart, but close to you, like, and follow the commandments so that your life will be at peace. I feel like that it has to be in order for me to be all that God has put me here to be, Teresa. I believe that I have to stay close to God. If you don't, I don't know how people who are going out there encouraging people to have a relationship with God will ever make it. You have to first focus on my own kindness. I have to first focus on my own loyalty. Do you feel me on this, y'all? It said, hang these things around your own neck first. You follow the commandments first. So loyalty really starts with who? Who does loyalty start with? How you doing, Khalil? Who does loyalty start with? It starts with you. Yes, yes, yes. Loyalty starts with me. So, but we live in a world that says, you weren't loyal to me, so I'm not going to be loyal to you. Correct? It's like commonplace. You did that wrong. You weren't kind, so I'm not going to be kind. And it comes so natural. <laughs> it comes so natural. Oh, oh, you want to be rude? I'm going to be rude. Like it, that is, you know, it just, it just, that is, and hey, I want it to become natural that <clears throat> I don't care what you did. I'm going to be loyal to my relationship with God. Cut off the disloyalty and move forward. Cut off anything that pulls out the worst of you and move forward. If it, you know, the word has a part where it says, if your right arm offendee, cut it off. Like, do you know how important your right arm is? And it's saying, that you might be confused about what is important to you. And I want you to get rid of it. Depart from evil. Depart from evil. It didn't say attack evil. Just depart from evil so that you can live right. Am I making sense? Yes, a whole lot of sense. Because it's not about what other people do. It's about them. And that's what I always tell myself. It's not about me. It's really yes. about their character and not yes. about my character. Yes, yes. And I think that, you know, if the if the Bible were um, today, like, you know, if we had <laughs> our today's version, you know, that it would, you know, be able to communicate that to us more. And I think that we have to read more into the stories because as Job went through situations of, you know, of people being disloyal to him and not being kind to him, you know, that he still kept his relationship with God. A lot was taken from him, you know, but he trusted that those things were to go. And in the end, as I told the young man who posted on our page, you know, that you will win. You will win. You all, but you have to stay focused on, like, because it's so easy to become 
like aggressive about it that, you know what, I'm going to make sure you did that to me. You hurt me. You are not loyal to me, you know, but we have to stay loyal to God. Don't stay loyal to people. God becomes before people. You stay loyal to God. You stay loyal to God and he will control our behavior because if we respond how people respond, this, you know, the world will look a lot like it is today, right? (laughs) You did that. So then they do this and you do that and you do this, but you know that we have to really pray through it because God will create the best life for us, not a reactive, but God allows us to be, you know, proactive. And we're building and creating the life that we want. Mm. And in Psalms chapter 12, verses one through one and two, um, that it says, this is David. He says, Lord, for no one is faithful anymore. Those who are loyal have vanished from the human race. Anyone, every, everyone lies to their neighbor. They flatter with their lips, but harbor deception in their hearts. That is not, so, so what we're having is not a new challenge today. You know, where you're like, I did that and I helped them get that job. And then now they're doing this to me. You know, people have hired people who have gotten them fired. People have, you know, uh, done tremendous things for people. But we have to know that God is in control. And then you continue to move forward. If we think that, you know, this world is going to, to thank us for what God allowed us to do, we might as well give up on that. Too much wasted energy when we have so many more people to help. I believe that the true definition of loyalty is God. It's God. And the word tells us that it's about, you know, that, that us being faithful. Because no matter what, God remains faithful and committed and loyal to us. Even when we fail God, he remains loyal to us. You know, the the word makes it clear that, that nothing, nothing can change our relationship with God. There is nothing that we can do that we cannot ask God to forgive us for and that he has not already forgiven us for. Mm. The word of God constantly, continuously, consistently says that God will never leave us nor forsake us, but that God will continue to do work in us until we're gone. That's why I believe that we all have so much to do. The Bible doesn't talk about we can change from one situation in our life to another, but you don't see a point in the life of of people in in the word where they just don't do anything anymore. They're not contributing to society anymore. Like now we have this thing where we think that, okay, we call it retirement and that it's time to just sit and watch TV and it's over for you. No, some of our greatest talent has thought that it is time for them to retire. So as as I help and God uses me to help people transition to what is called retirement, I work on what do we do next? What are you working on now? What's your next project? What do you want to start? It is the end of something, but the beginning of something else. So so what I, I feel that has helped me, and please let me know if, if you agree that I had to like separate um, when, when something happens to me, I had to separate that it happened to me. And, and, and basically, um, and I've heard it say before, I think Fr- Kirk Franklin has it in a song that, you know, that you have to die in order to live. You know, I had to, my old self, my old insecurities, my old, you know, that, um, that we will see you know, will want to creep up, but you have to realize that that is gone, that is the past, that, 
you know, that you don't have to worry about what no one, no one can do anything to you because God has you. So we just allow that old ego of they hurt my feelings. Um, they're going to try to take my job. They're going to try to take your partner. They're going to try to take, you know, um, take some, they're going to pull you down. They're going to make you look bad. Take all of that and just throw away and realize that our main loyalty has to be with our relationship with God. And that as we become more and more loyal to God and know that we can depend on him, it allows our heart to open up and to be able to be more loving. Because so many of our you know, relationships on the work, professional, personal, and everything are, are built on, on a, a, a defensive level because we haven't allowed God to just take over our life and realize that anything that is done, they're, they're attacking God. They're attacking you know, the God in you that they see. And when things go right, and you know it, I know that it's because they see God in me. That God in me is the confidence that they can feel when they choose to you know, develop a, a, a personal or business relationship or anything, that it, it's the God, God in you. It's the God in you that I'm attaching to. And with that, so through that, we know that no weapon formed against you shall prosper when your loyalty is to God. And that's even, that's even ourselves. Like, so, cause we can become the weapon against ourselves when you are not taking care of yourself, when you're not following the 10 commandments yourself, it will stop your prosperity. It's not the economy. It's not the job. It's not, you, you know, our prosperity, you know, is so much bigger than just the wealth, just the money, just the stock market. And I say that as an investment advisor, our prosperity is so much bigger than that. And I see so many people teaching about money, teaching people to idolize and worship money when they're prosper, when they will have all the money in the world maybe, but they won't have that prosperity that God promises until we develop our loyalty and put God first in everything. Because mm. a, godly, a godly business relationship is priceless. A godly marriage is priceless. A godly friendship is priceless. A godly mother-daughter Father son relationship is priceless. Mm. Many people only show loyalty when it's of benefit to them. If, if they're not getting anything out of it, they're not going to be loyal. You, you feel me, y'all? Who has seen that? You know, you're going to, they're going to do what is required of them only as long as they feel that they're getting something out of it. For a minute, they feel like, you know what, this isn't working for me. You know, they're out. Well, <laughs> wealth starts in the mind. That's right. But I want to, I want to really, I want some feedback on that. That loyalty based on what you're getting, what you're getting out or what they're doing for you. So if they're doing something for you, then you're, you're loyal and you're supportive. But if they're not doing anything for you, then, you know, and I think that that, that, that happens a lot, like over, you know, some people can't be supportive of their children because they, you know, a little baby, you, know, you think to yourself, like, how can somebody not take care of a little baby? But they don't, they don't think the kid's doing anything for them. So they get frustrated. Real, you know, not supportive, not seeing. The word says our children are a gift from God. 
that you have a responsibility, that for you to be blessed with a child, child, not when they get older, you try to make up for what you didn't do when they were kids. <laughs> it says our children, the little babies, the little kids are a gift from God. You're bringing them up in the way that they should go. You're setting the example. You're having that loyal relationship with God that makes you kind and supportive and loving and a beautiful example to them of what a godly person is and how they should carry it. Good morning, JB. What I found is when I wasn't in a position to help, well, what people may have perceived as not being able to help them, like couldn't help them advance in right. their career, couldn't help them get where they wanted to go. Then all of a sudden I was invisible. That's so right. When I was able to, you know, when I had a little, what they would consider a statue or, or what in their mind, whatever it is, right. then all of a sudden they want to gravitate. Like now That's you right. can do something for me. So now I want to be a part of what you're doing. That's as right. To being there the whole time. That's right. And you see it. But because of your relationship with God, God gave you that. God gave you that enlightenment. God gave, but your kindness, you still are kind, but you realize that that's not a godly based relationship that they've decided to have with you. Because if it's God based, they are loving and supportive and kind to you, regardless of what you do. That's, that's why it's very important to me for Afroeconomics to have a free membership because I believe that this is, God gave me this ability to, to share this. A lot of the ideas and things that come to me, you know, I know are from God. I know that, you know, I'm, I'll look at a situation, you know, and then boom, you know, I had no idea. I could start the conversation, have no idea what we're going to accomplish. And then God brings exactly what it is that I need to do to help them. So I know that everybody that can have access to that type of information, if they're just hearing, if they're just participating, just let us in. I believe, I believe that it is my God responsibility to make sure that everybody who wants to know about financial empowerment and living a financially godly, financially empowered life that they need to have access to it. And that's why the YouTube channel, all this stuff I recorded, I put it on there. You know, they, they get to participate in um, free because I'm not, I don't want you to feel like, well, I'm not going to help you. And I don't think you should get this information unless you have at least 200, um, unless you have at least a million dollars, at least you have, you know, I want to, I want to see God work in your life. I want, I love to see, you know, God, what God can do with the, with the information that you get. And I've seen so many people, it might take a year or two, go from just being a free membership to all of a sudden they're getting onto the financial planning level, but it gives them the encouragement and it allows them to see how important it is to invest in your life. You know, where God talks about the parable, um, the word talks about, has the parable of the talents, you know, and how it's what you do with your blessings. So I don't think that everything should just be given to us, but we need to be given the opportunity to learn what are the steps needed in order for us to get where God would have us to be. You know, that we need to put ourselves in positive surroundings like this to hear sisters like Ms. Ramadan speak, you know, to hear uh, to hear Ms. Howard express her, her experiences and her opinion and hear um, the work experiences of Ms. Richardson. You know how many people never hear Black people, professionals articulate and share the way we do during our sessions? You know, they think everybody that is Black is like somebody on a hip hop video. They don't know that we're out here critically thinking, developing business strategies through our relationship with God. We are doing phenomenal, amazing things. And this hopefully, and I mean, I just see it. I don't know. We might not even be here. It might be 10 years from now. Somebody's going to the, 
you know, social media channel and playing a recording of this, you know, <laughs> we're gone. And you want something that you said or I said, that's why we have to keep giving and giving and giving. You don't have any right to sit there with something to say and not say it. God has opened up the mic. He has said it. And too often we do that. We live and die with what God told you to share. I mean, we're in such a world that it's like said that it's okay. I'll oh, keep that to yourself. That's, that's, that's your idea. Somebody might take your idea. Oh my goodness. Somebody might take your idea and do what? Your, what you're led to do with your idea is totally different than what somebody else is led to do with their idea. And as many people say, there is nothing new under the planet. So we need to share and share and share so that our community and this world can be more empowered. The, oh my goodness. So I want to also talk about how it's important for us to continue to grow in our respect for others and to show our love for God freely. You know, we, we don't ever want to, you know, in our relationship with God and our growing in our loyalty, um, I, I think that it's important for us to realize that we are becoming the picture, the image, of what a person sees as a godly person. You know, you, you are becoming quickly, as you live your life, as you go through your days, realize that you are the picture of a godly person to someone else and that you have a responsibility to carry yourself accordingly. You become, if you show yourself disloyal, even at work, and you throw someone under the bus, they connect that with, oh, okay, there she is, Miss Godly, you know, and then she's throwing me under the bus. All they need is one excuse in order to do that. And, and then they, it hurts their relationship with God. So we do have a responsibility to, to, to loyalty as an action. Like loyalty is like love is a verb. Mm. And then, and then let's look at second Timothy chapter two, verse 13. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful for he cannot deny who he is. Do you stay faithful to yourself or have you ever denied who you are? Because even in, if we could continue in Proverbs chapter 20, verse six, many will say they are loyal friends, but who can find one who is truly reliable? Do you have a reliable friend? Do you? And then. And then also remember, I was sharing about my child, never forget the things that I've taught you. Store my commands in your heart. Do you know, do you know the 10 commandments? Who knows the 10 commandments? He said, store my commands in your heart. Who knows the 10 commandments? Who knows them for real? Like, so like, do you take them seriously or do you just, you know, feel like you shall have no other gods before me? You shall not make idols. You shall not make the name of the Lord, your God in vain. You not, you shall not take it. Don't take it. Don't take his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Does that mean don't go to work? Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. What do you think? Does that mean you don't go to work? I think sometimes you do have to go to work. You can, um, some people have to go to work. I mean, I, I think sometimes you do have to go to work, but I think you can still keep God the focus of your day wherever you are, even if you are working. That's right. That's right. Honor your father and your mother. What about that? Like, what if your father and your mother, you know, are not loyal to God? Like, 
so and you have to tell them that they're you don't agree you don't have to say that they're wrong right like the, but you could tell them that you don't agree on some things is that okay you think i think it's okay you I can still so. honor someone and um, still try to help them and guide them even if they are your parents that's right like what what if what if your your children came what if your children came one day and they said you know i don't i don't want to worship the way you worship you know they say that they want to you know have a relationship with god but they don't want to worship the way you worship you know the um you know i mean you have to think about this like is, is that disrespectful to you are you going to like you know, never love your children, you know, would God want you to do that? You know, I think, you know, in, in, in times, even in the time of Jesus, like there were different, you know, ways of worship. And I believe that, that you should be true to your way of worship, but you also should allow others to worship freely as they decide to worship. Would you agree? I honor anybody's relationship with God. I agree. I agree 100%. Amen. Amen. It's not our relationship. It's their relationship. And it's never been about religion to me. It's about relationships. So it's Amen. for them to discover. Amen. We guide them, of course. We guide them. But it's their relationship with God that they have to find with our guidance. That's right. Miss Miss Perkins, you in there texting? You can talk. <laughs> it's like, look when I look at the text and I look at it um, late. Y'all are so quiet today. Thank you, Miss Ramadan, for sharing with me our little quiet participants. But you know what? Sometimes I think that means I don't know, Teresa. You've been quiet too, but you're texting the um that that maybe the topic really hits you when you get speechless. Like that maybe loyalty is really what we need to be thinking about, that we needed to be talking about. Because it seems to me like whenever anybody, when when the, whatever the elephant in the room is, you know, when you speak on it, it's, it's like crickets. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> but I, I believe that um, loyal, loyalty is a huge word. And I think that some things, when you look back on your life, you know, and you can, I think that we should accept like, wow, I dropped the ball on that. I could have approached that differently, you know, but we have so much time ahead of us. I have so much, anybody that met me 20 years ago, they have no, they, they don't even know the person that I am today. And that is because of the grace of God. I used to be Miss Ramadan, the biggest crybaby on the planet. I, everything I cry about, everything hurt my feelings. Everything, you know, and now I might cry now, but I don't have that crybaby heart. Like, you know, now it's just like, well, it's not about me. It's about God, because if you catch me doing something, you're catching me doing something for God's sake. That's what I want it to be. You know, that's the way I want it to be. And when you get caught doing something for God's sake, you know, it's nothing to cry about. You know, let them attack you. Let them persecute you. They did that. That's what they do. You know, your excellence is going to bother a lot of people. But be caught being excellent, becoming more excellent. That's okay. And then they'll remind you of how unexcellent you used to be. You know, that's, that's important to them because your progress touches on their insecurity of how they haven't allowed God to use them to move forward. And that's okay because it's more important on those who your progress is inspiring. You're inspiring. You have to focus on God's will over your life to pull more people to a relationship with God. You know, thou shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. 
you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Look, don't leave lying on people. You shall not covet. No, don't be jealous. This could solve a lot of the world's problems. <laughs> I guess that's why it's such a key. You know, I think that is such a beautiful word. Mm, mm, mm. Teresa, please share your testimony. Please share. All right, and I'm so glad I, I decided to wait. Um, I have a, this, uh, this testimony from this week. Um, I have a 23 year old son and um, I didn't want him to work a job this, this, because of this COVID thing. And um, he, he had, he's been going through some car situations where he had a lemon and he got a new job that's um, over 50 miles away. And I didn't want his dad, um, you know, wanted him to, he's been renting a car for, his dad renting him a car for the last few weeks. And um, he's, my son's been going through this stage where he feels like he, 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 he went to a Christian school and then he went to Michael schools. He feels like um, he's not going to worship God anymore. Mm. He's going to do his, do it his way. And um, that's fine. I let him go through that stage where he, you know, he don't want to believe in God and whatever. But he knows his mom is a prayer warrior. And when I go in my prayer closet, I don't want to be disturbed. And I got a lot on my mind that I'm praying about. He didn't want to pray. He don't want to do anything religious. Mm. But but now he knows he's he got an, he's in a situation where he want to keep that job, mm. and he don't have any transportation. Mm. Um, and he she's been looking on the internet and trying to figure out how he's going to get a, a car because his dad is tired of pay tired of paying the um the rental. So. Even um, looking on the internet, I said, okay, go ahead, look on the internet, keep, you know, go look at this dealership where I deal with. So he did. He didn't see anything. He saw something he liked, but he couldn't afford it. And um, I started looking because I, I was worried about him. I really didn't want him going at night with a, a baggy car anywhere. Um, so Friday, no, Thursday night, no, Wednesday night, I looked on the internet, did not see the car that he wanted. And he, Friday morning, he woke up as early as I did and came talking to me about the cars. And as we were talking, I had my app open and there was a car just like he wanted, popped up instantly. Wow. And then that night before I went to bed, I prayed about it too. I want, I prayed to God, I said, I want him to have a decent car. That's right. And um, as we were talking, the car that he wanted, popped up on the internet and he, I showed it to him. I said, okay, um, he, I said, that's the car you want? I said, okay, let's, we can get that car. Let's go in the prayer, my prayer closet. Mm. And he, 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 he didn't hesitate. I said, well, <laughs> you come into this prayer closet because we, we got to pray about that we can get this car. That's right. So he sat in the prayer closet with me and I prayed. And then I asked him to pray. He said, well, I'm going to pray, but I'm going to pray silently because he's ashamed of himself. Mm -hmm. So he prayed silently for about three minutes. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I was just, I didn't say nothing. I said, okay. I said, well, after we finish, I said, okay, let's get, just get dressed. We're going to be there before the car dealership open and we're going to get this car. Amen. And that's what we did. That's so good. And all the credit things worked out. I got good credit. So it worked out that somebody finances from Northern Virginia want my business That's and right. um, the credit union somewhere in Northern Virginia. That's and right. we got the car at a very low rate. Of, I never known anybody to get a car. Uh, the car was a good deal anyway. Um, a three-year-old car at 3.99% interest. Mm. And, yes. and I, he now he, he, he going to be loyalty to his mama even more because he, I've been, I wore my niece out with that boy. That's right. And he's going to be loyal to his daddy and not disrespect and talk back yeah. and say things That's right. that I don't like. That's right. And he's going to do all the things we taught him. And well, he's believing God again and, and trust God with, and more than, with, above anything or anybody. Do you, do you want me, do you want my response? Go ahead. You sure? 
<laughs> Teresa. Go ahead and talk. You didn't give me yours. No, but you got to tell me if you want it. Oh, if I, if I want your response. Because sometimes, sometimes you just say things. You might not want my response. Like, you know what I mean? Sometimes people just want to say something. I'm trying to honor that. Oh, okay. Do you sure, want? Go ahead, because I, you, you, I want your response. You do? Teresa, you want my response? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Hey. Okay. I get... Teresa, everything within me says it's not going to work out the way you want it to. And what you did um, was you are blessed, but we cannot connect God with material items. And he came in that closet in order to please you. So it creates a loyalty to you but it doesn't create a loyalty to God. So what, what you have to do is in the next, God will give you another opportunity. Okay. But you're going to have to step out. Oh, I did. I had you're going to have to step out. Like when you think about Moses and when his mother had to put him in a basket so that he could live and she put him in, you know, the Nile. And she said, you know, because if not, you are building, you know, you're now your credit is connected to that. Oh. Now your relationship with God is enhanced. But I, first of all, I want us to move away from owing anybody money. I want us to move away from the payment mentality. I want us to move into a sacrifice mentality. And you have to allow him to develop that too, because he's grown. I mean, you know, if for if you think about yourself at that age, I'm not even going to use myself as an example, but yourself at that age, you know that that wouldn't have happened for you. Oh no, oh no, because my parents. So you can't. In order for him to be like you, independent, you have to allow him to build the same muscle. Oh, but I've been teaching economics to him. But hey, no, no, I've but you have to teach him. And he knows yeah. that God is not a Santa but, Claus. But this, He's yeah, God. but you just became Santa Claus when you went to that dealership with him. No, I prayed about it. I've been praying about that all week. I didn't want him to have that job. I, he lost, he just, he had, he hasn't okay. worked since. But it was, months. what I said was for somebody, Teresa, you're not receiving what I'm saying, That's but fine. it's for somebody needs to hear that. And I so, prayed to him, everything... This is his first time. The car is in his. He, he's. Per, I'm helping him build his credit. I but your him. name is on that loan. Yes. I don't even want your name on a school loan. I don't want my name. Uh, on I prefer do to say not co-sign for anyone. Well, I ever. prefer to pay cash. I really ever I do not co-sign for anyone. Mm -hmm. And there's no reason for anybody who has no money to build credit. That, so that's the biggest lie that we tell ourselves. You know what I'm saying? That's the subject. The word says, do not be, you know, a slave to, anyone. to this system. Yes, don't, don't be in debt. do it. So don't do it. Don't give in. Don't give in. Well, I want him if to If I had my way, I'd tell you to wake him up. You know what I'm saying? And make him work. Do something. He better not be asleep right now. He's at he work. He works. He better, he better be. He better be. I want a picture. Take a tell him to send me a picture from the phone. But <laughs> nothing will change for us unless we change things. We have to change. Our relationship with God is not based on these little apps and little stuff. See, see what they did, that algorithm became God. But what happens is the algorithm, and I'm not even lying to you, Teresa, if you say out loud, around your phone, what you're looking for. And y'all can tell me, tell, make sure you tell Teresa, I'm telling the truth. That phone will find exactly what you said out loud. Isn't that true? Oh, yes, yes it is very, very, very true.
that oh. that wasn't God that put that phone that car on your phone. That was the algorithm. Your phone is live. This is serious. Oh yeah, because they, they follow. They are picking up. Yeah, they picked they up. They follow our, our internet our, our, our moves on the social yes. media. Yes, so the they got you. Technology. They know so, what I want. Yes, they know what yes. And all that. So that was wrong. And you tell him that your financial advisor said you should not have cosign. I'm telling you, I had a college degree, and my father still refused to cosign for a car for me. You know, that is, not, that is wrong. And we have to not, he did the, my father did the right thing. And I went to a car dealership with my job contract and said, I don't, you know, I don't have a cosigner, but I got a job. What can I do? And they got me in that vehicle. Okay. But you do not have to give in. And that's a man. My dad was the president of a college and said, no. You are single by yourself. No, we do too much. We're not God. Mm. Yeah, but I, I trust my son. I really do trust that because he- I he, don't he, he, trust he, God. Your son is, all they are is just, especially if his relationship with God's not right yet, put all your trust in God and love your son. Put all your trust in God and love your son. Put all your trust in God and love your son. And that applies for everything and everybody on this planet. Everything and everybody on this planet. You are, you know what I'm saying? You are setting yourself up for disappointment. Do not trust him. Trust God. And whatever comes of it, you have to trust God that this is the lesson that God wants us to get out of it. Period. Your loyalty is to God, but that's how they do. And next time you talk to me, that's what I'm here for. Y'all run into a situation and it's hard for you to say no, talk to me. I'll give you 10 reasons. I had a, had a member last week and she was calling me. So she said, I got to do this refinance. It's 2%. Oh no. And then when I looked at the deal, they were charging her over $5,000 to get that 2% and additional fees, it was going to cost her $12,000 of her equity just to do the deal. So always use the resources that God has given you. It's biblical. Seek wise counsel. Allow me, well, allow God to, to use me. And I pray that he will use me accordingly. You know, I do my best to share wisdom and it's not easy. Nobody want to say, you know, oh, no, we shouldn't do that, you know, and then and I get a lot of pain from that, but I have to focus on that. This is what God has told me to do. This is what God has told me to say. I can't, uh, you know, focus on appeasing you. That's not what love is of my father. I, you would not know me today if my father hadn't made me that strong person. If he had allowed me, I'd just be going around, you know. So who was who actually would ever know that I came up, you know what I mean? And my father was a college president. When I went through school, I worked two and three jobs. He didn't send me money every week. He said, I worked through college. You worked through college. You should have got a scholarship. I worked my senior year. I had 18 credits and three jobs at University of Virginia. We can do this. Well, you got to make the kids do this. If he hadn't made me like that, I wouldn't do what I do today. There's no way. I mean, my thing is, I don't even understand why he was renting the car. Like you could take Uber, you could carpool. People get to work. They need to stop. Kids need to stop looking at their parents. You know what I mean? For everything. Oh, well, what do I do? Especially after they get past 18. You going out and you doing whatever you want to do. Don't be looking at me as I'm supposed to have the resolution for that. If I can't tell you sit down and do something and, and study this, if I can't tell you that, then you certainly can't get in my wallet. And we need, I mean, and unapologetically, it's because we're so alone. So many children are being raised by single parents. Like my parents would double gang on me. They would be in one cohesive thought. 
Now with the father over here, the mother over here, it's harder for us to build these kids up the way that they can. Because if one don't do it, they go over to get the other to do it. And then they play us against each other. You know, but we have to stop allowing them to do that. And my daughter tries to do that to me. I always tell her, look, I don't have nothing else to do. I don't have anything to do with it. I don't have anything to do with that. And I have to stay focused on God because I just love her too much to make her weak. We got to love them too much. Well, let me say make make one weak. statement. My son and his father worked together on that car. Yep, and they should have bought the other one together. And, and we have, shouldn't we have been on any possible he has been they with shouldn't his even other job. They shouldn't even have got you involved. Why you got to be on the loan? Why you got to do it? Because, because it's a good way to build his credit? No. And no, it's no, it's not. I, That's building I don't want him credit. to be traveling if somewhere. You should have gone in that dealership and told them, if you can't do it by himself, it won't get done. No, no. I you felt should okay. not have put is your name on that loan. My, that that's security. Yes, and I'm not that's your name. That. So that's the point, Teresa. Stop defending it. There is no defense. There is no that's justification what? for co-signing for our children when they're grown. We cannot do it, especially I you know one if, child, if right? You rich, if you rich, good, then you buy them the car. You don't know what, what, what I have. You just know that you I'm don't. single. But you should have just bought it for him. If you were rich, you should have just bought it. God's got my back. That's God what. always has your back. But see, so, this is an example, y'all, what I'm talking about. How I am his daughter. Did, Teresa, this is a prime example how the how the world will get in our head. And no, regardless of what the word says, because you know the word more than I do. I have, I you have know. advisors. I have several advisors. Not only you, God, and others. Well, you're not a client of mine, so I right. understand. But if your advisor advised that you do that, I advise that you get your advisor to call me. I, <laughs> they, I am not. Because they need call. advice. I am not some system. advisors need advice, but that's you, but, you know, but that's totally yeah. up to you and beautiful and God is good. And um, if you're happy, please, dear God, please forgive me, Lord, for you know if I have mean? done anything to offend you, Teresa. No, you haven't. I just want the best for you I and for your son. Believe me, I want the best for you and your son. I want your son to you have the best life. That's it, you that's do the it. Best, you know, I should, you know it's, it's a good point. And I'm, I'm glad I brought it up at this time because- Y'all had to mute with Teresa. <laughs> so we could go on. I want to say beautiful, 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 beautiful day. But that was a great story. Great story. Well, thank you all so much. This is Sunday. At sunrise, we are right there at eight. Thank you, Teresa. You know I love you. And thank you so much for Ms. Ramadan for all your comments. I think that we all learned something from that because I'm telling you one thing that is hard is saying no to someone that you love. But God has to say no to us, to us a lot. Mm, mm, mm. God is good. Well, please don't hesitate to ever reach out to me. Even if you if you feel the slightest bit like something, this might not be right. I'll be happy to share my opinion with you. My email, but you got to first tell me you want my opinion. <laughs> JB at jbbryan.com. Everybody all right? Thank you, y'all. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week. I'll see you Wednesday night. How about October is financial planning? month financial planning month look at afroeconomics it's every month as as we close out i want to share the mark chapter 8 verse 34 through 35 then jesus called the crowd to himself along with his disciples and told them if anyone wants to follow me he must deny himself pick up his cross and follow me continuously because whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life 
for my sake and for the gospel will save it. Mark chapter 8, verses 34 through 35. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful day. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.